First uh, uh, Peter chapter three. First Peter chapter three. I'm trying to take it easy today. All right. Amen. So First Peter uh, chapter three, uh, and then if you would just let's bow for a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we humbly approach your throne of grace and of mercy. We thank you, Lord, for this day, and we thank you for your many blessings. We are grateful that you allow us to wake up every morning. Amen. We are grateful, Father, for the blessings of our families and our jobs and our finances. We humble ourselves in your sight, recognizing that everything that we have comes from you. Amen. Help us, Lord, as we live daily for you, that we will strive each day to do your will and not our own. Amen. Uh, forgive us of our many sins. Yes. And our many shortcomings. Yes. We ask you, God, to help us to forgive others. Amen. Just like you forgave us. Help us to continue to love others. Amen. Just the way you love us. Heavenly Father, we just ask you, God, to allow your word this morning to penetrate the hearts of your people. We pray, God, that your word may be a lamp unto our feet and light unto our path. Help us all, Father, to think about our lives and what you have called us to do. Amen. Help us, God, to let your word dwell in our hearts richly, that we may continue to be a better person in the future than we have been in the past. Amen. Help us to know, Father, your will and know your word so that we can apply it to our everyday lives. Help us as we come to church, Father, we worship you that we'll remember the, your words and to make necessary applications to your word that we may be a testimony and an example to those that are around us, even in the church, even in the family, Amen. and even at work, even school father we pray that you bless us and, to, and so god we just thank you thank you for all Lord. that you have done for us all that you are doing right now and all that you will do uh, we thank you for all of our new converts of this congregation we pray god your blessings on them this day we pray god that we as a church will continue to rally around them and help encourage them the way somebody else have encouraged us we love you, Lord, and we thank you. In thank Jesus you, Lord. Name we pray that every heart say amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, let us turn to 1 Peter uh, chapter 3. And uh, we'll begin at verse uh, number 8 as we continue our theme uh, for uh, this, uh, this year thus far. Uh, we are certainly praying, uh, amen, uh, for each of you. Uh, praying, she says, Brian is coming. I know she's not feeling well, uh, so y'all keep her uh, in your prayers. Um, first Peter chapter 3 uh, and verse 8, the Bible says, Finally, be all of what? One mind. Let's read together. Having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful. Be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessed, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and seek good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no God. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Amen. We want to again continue our theme. Excuse me as we talk about how to build a better self uh, for a better servant. And as we talk about what, what is our responsibility towards God, as we strive each day to recognize God's word and God's way of living, 
because actually we are the persons who are supposed uh, to live for God and we are the ones who should be the testimony of his word and we are the ones who should be able to tell somebody the way that we live by the way we live about the Lord. Uh, amen. We are supposed to be the one who, uh, who sets the example. Uh, amen. And, uh, for others, we want our children to set example. Uh, amen. And, uh, and we ought to want to do the same for the Lord. And so it's important as we go through this, if you find yourself looking in the mirror, uh, amen, and you see there are things that you are doing, the, the reason why we come and to hear the word of God and to hear God's word is so that we can apply the things that we've learned. Is that right? Amen. Uh, we are supposed to look into the mirror, we're supposed to look at ourselves and make necessary adjustments. Because as the Bible says, no one looks into a mirror and then sees the necessary adjustment that needs to be made and don't do that. Amen. So it's important if we're going to thrive as a church, if we're going to be the church that God wants us to be, we have to strive. And it doesn't mean that we're going to be perfect. Amen. Every once in a while, somebody will mess up. Amen. Every once in a while, we're going to mess up. Uh, but it doesn't mean we can't get back up and keep on uh, consistently doing what God has said to do. And so here in this particular part of God's word in 1 Peter chapter 3 and uh, verse number 8, we find that we were looking at having the right attitude. Amen. Yeah. Then we're going to have we're looking at having the right response. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to look at having uh, the right standard. And then we're going to look at having the right incentive. Uh, so we're looking at four areas uh, that we can apply, especially this year as we begin uh, 2020. Uh, almost, it's, it's almost at the end of the year. Uh, amen. This year is going to go fast. So we want to apply what we're learning so that we, when we make the necessary adjustments and assessment of where we are, uh, because can nobody make that but you. Amen. Amen. Where you are with the Lord, you have to know. Uh, and, and, and you have to cultivate that part of your life where God is going to get the glory. Amen. Uh, and at, at the end of the day, everything that we do, we are making God look good. Amen. Uh, all of the ministries, all of the things that we do in the church, we are doing it to make God look good. Amen. And so eventually, that's what we want to, we want to do so that God will be pleased uh, with our behavior. Amen. Uh, finally, he said, be all of one mind. That's the right attitude. Having compassion one of another, love as brethren, love as a family. Uh, have, uh, uh, be pitiful, he said, to be courteous, be, uh, amen, sympathetic to others and be empathetic uh, with others and be courteous. Uh, he says, uh, here, be kind uh, towards others. And then uh, that's the right attitude that we ought to have. And then 9, verse 9, uh, not rendering evil for evil. Now we're getting into having the right response. The right response that we ought to have as people of God is not just to, is not to render evil for evil. Y'all know what that means. Amen. Uh, that means you don't trade evil for evil. Uh, you don't trade evil, one evil word for another evil word. Uh, amen. Whether you're at home, whether you're in the church, whether you're at work, you don't trade one evil, amen, for another evil. Uh, and then he surely said, not insult for insult. <clears throat> amen, somebody. That means that if somebody insults you, you don't trade another insult. Y'all all right? I know it's going to be hard for you here, but it's the truth anyhow. Uh, it's important that we understand that. He says, railing for railing. That's insult for insult. Uh, it's important that as we grow as a, trip, as a child of God, that we remember whose we are, amen, and who we belong to. Uh, we got to remember that. If we don't remember that, church, we will never be where God wants us to be. Uh, we have to understand that if we are children of God and we say we love the Lord and we say we are his people, then his people ought to be examples of what that of the word of God. Amen. That means that if somebody insults you, Brother Tex, you don't have to insult them back. All right. All right. Amen. So y'all are right. right. Yes. If, if somebody treats you, you don't have to treat them bad. Amen. Amen. You overcome evil with what? Evil. 
Good. Good. Amen. You, you overcome evil with good. Somebody slaps you. Amen. On one cheek. Come on, somebody. You turn the other cheek. You turn the other. <laughs> amen. Uh, amen. You, you have to learn. Amen. We have to learn that that. But Jesus said, somebody takes your coat. Give him. Amen. Your cloak as well. Uh, amen. I know this is hard for some of us. Amen. Uh, because our flesh ain't gonna let us. Uh, amen. Take nothing from nobody. And that's what, you know, but I, that's not the right teaching. Amen. The right teaching should be that we take what was, amen, what's from others. Uh, amen. We take it. Uh, amen. And so it's important that we all understand our responsibility when it comes to how we ought to live for God. And it's not easy. So here's what you got to do. You got to be, you got to stay in the word of God. Amen. Amen, somebody. You got Amen. to stay and connect it to God. Amen. You got to pray to God. You got to surround yourself uh, with people of like faith. Uh, who, 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 who loves to see that you're rendering. Uh, amen. Amen. Not evil for evil, but amen. Good for evil. Amen, somebody. So you got to surround. Otherwise, you, they're going to egg you on. Amen. Have you ever been mad at somebody? <laughs> And, and, and you had a friend that egged you on? Uh, amen. You don't forgot it about three days ago. Amen. And, 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 and they egged you on. And they said, boy, if, I, if that was me, I girl, if I was me. And you don't got mad all over again. Amen. So we have to understand that what God is expecting from us as we teach our children, as we teach our youth of this congregation, as we, as we minister to one another, we have to make sure that we uh, show our responsibility as well. And our duty is to serve God and to be what God wants us to be. We need, uh, amen, wives and spouses who would not trade insult for insult. Amen. Y'all all right? Yes. Uh, if you're in a relationship of any kind, even with your own children, you don't cuss your children. Your children don't cuss you. you come on, somebody. You don't insult your children. Your children don't insult you. Amen. So we have to understand there is a there is there is a relationship that we have to cultivate a kind of behavior that we got to cultivate that when somebody looks at you, they can see God in you. Uh, amen. They can see that you're not this kind of person. They can see that you're not what others are saying that you are. Amen, somebody. Because when you know who you are and you're doing God's will, it doesn't matter what others may say about you. You are doing God's will. Amen. And so it's important that if we are going to be a better servant, that we have to learn how to let the word of Christ dwell well, in our child richly. richly. So he says, not rendering evil for evil or trading railing for railing but contrary wise blessing the bible said a soft answer all right does what turns amen turns away wrath yeah. if you we have to learn that if we want to respond the right way the right way to respond to somebody is soft yeah. amen right, right. i saw what answer turns away wrath. The reason why folk are in conflict in life and are fighting constantly every day uh, is because they are they all the soft answers. Yes, right. uh, amen, somebody. We have to learn, church, if we're going to be the people of God that we are, not just by the name and the sign on the outside. We want to be people of God on the inside. Amen. We want to teach our children. We want to teach our spouses and teach each other in the church because a lot of us come from homes that are that, that are cussing and cutting. Amen, somebody. And so you come in the church cussing and cutting. Uh, amen. So you, you 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 can't we can't be that way. Sometimes we have to stand up to our own families and say, now nah, I've I got a new life I got to live here. Amen. I can't be cussing and cutting like y'all anymore. Amen. And sometimes they may stop giving you money because you did, man. And you don't run with them anymore. You don't say the same things like they do anymore. You don't go by the bars like they do anymore. Come on, somebody. Uh, amen. We need to understand our responsibility is to simply make God look good. Amen. Uh, amen. And we want our children to get out there and in the schools and in the community and do things to make them, to make us look good. Amen. Well, that's what God wants for us. 
Amen. So we need to cultivate uh, that kind uh, of response. He said, we want to be a blessing. Somebody curse you. Uh, amen. Be a blessing to them. Uh, amen. Somebody insult you. Be a blessing to them. I wish I had somebody here. Uh, amen. Somebody hurt your feeling. Be a blessing to them. Uh, amen. That's how God gets the glory. Uh, amen. God gets the glory, Nathaniel, when you, when, 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 when people are talking about you and yet you are treating them kindly and nice. Uh, amen. You're still speaking to them nicely. You're still doing for them. That's where God gets the glory, y'all. Amen. And every now and then we ought to have God on our conscience when we deal with this life, when we deal with life and when life deals with us, we have to learn to respond with a blessing. Amen. The blessing that God has, uh, amen, has put in you and I, those blessings are self-control. Amen. Those blessings are faith. Those blessings are love. We need to respond in a loving way, in a faithful way, in goodness. Amen. The way the Holy Spirit and what Brother Hamilton read this morning, the fruit of the Spirit of God, that's the blessing that we need to respond and how we need to respond when it comes to this life. Oh, yeah. And dealing with our with people in the church, dealing with folk in the world, dealing with folk in our family. Oh. We need to have the right response because they don't know how to. Yeah. And how are they going to know when amen when we are doing the same? Right. How are they going to know? Because they're in darkness and they don't know how to live in the light. Right. But if we live in the light, if God has brought us in the light, what needs to happen is that some light needs to be shot. Amen, somebody. Shine in. Every now and then, you will let your light so shine before me in the day. You see your good works and glorify the Father, which is in heaven. Amen. Every now and then, we ought to be giving God some praise. We ought to be thankful that he brought us out of darkness. He didn't bring us out of darkness to make us still live as the way we come on somebody. There was a purpose why God brought us out of darkness. The purpose is not for you to still live the same old life. Amen. But to live a new life. Amen. Amen. Somebody. And somebody ought to see that you're living a new life. Oh, if after yeah. 50 or 20 years, you're still the same way, something is wrong. Amen. 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 Somebody. Amen. And we need to learn that the Holy Spirit of God that lives in us, that all of us got when we got baptized, Amen. the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that you have in order to live this life for God. Amen. Amen. You can't live it on your own. Amen. You can live this life on your own. You have to live it because of the Holy Spirit that lives in you. The Holy Spirit is more powerful than your own flesh. Amen. So when the flesh want to rise up, you got to let access, give access to the Spirit of God. You got to let the Holy Spirit take over your own. Amen. But you have to practice uh, amen. Yes. Giving the Holy Spirit the power. Uh, amen. You can't just wait till somebody run upon you. Yes, uh, amen, somebody. And now yes. you won't. No, no, no. You have to be practicing that. Because yes. uh, if they run upon you, you haven't been practicing, you're going to cuss them right back out. Uh, come on, somebody. Yes, amen. Yes, so you have to constantly train yourself yes. to be able to respond in a godly way. Yes. Amen, somebody. Yes. So you have to learn that. And we know it ain't easy. Yes. And we know we, we're not looking at nobody's faults. We're not looking and judging nobody. Right. All we're simply here to do is encourage each other. Right. If you call me, you want to call me to encourage me. Right. Not to talk about me, not to run me down, right. but encourage me. Amen, somebody. You, you, if I fell down, you want to learn to pick me up. Amen. Don't talk about what I'm doing. Just help me up. Amen, somebody. And the once in a while, you help somebody up rather than being judgmental. Amen, somebody. We need to learn and how to respond in the right way. He says, watch this now. He says, knowing. It's all about the knowledge, y'all. It's all about what you know. Amen. Uh, it's important that you know. Now, if, 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 if you're in school and, and, and the teacher is teaching and, 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 and you're not getting it. Amen. Amen. Sometimes the teacher has to teach you again. And, and it's all about knowledge because uh, you won't, when you go to a doctor, uh, amen, the doctor got some knowledge. Right. You don't want a doctor that, that, that paid to get his degree. Yes, right. Amen. So, otherwise, you'd be dead. All right. uh, amen. Because they got to work on your body. Amen. They got to work on you physically. When you're sick, you need somebody that knows some stuff. 
Uh, I wish I had somebody here. You, that's why Paul says that I may know him. Yes, yes. Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 10. Yes. He said that I may know him. Yes. And he said that the power of his resurrection. Yes. And he says I'd rather know God yes. than the stuff I know in life because yes. the stuff I know in life can't help me when it comes down to Satan attacking me. Yes. But I want to know him. I, I spend my life trying to know God. If I'm going to spend my life trying to know the Lord, I'm going to have to stay in His way. I can't know God unless I stay in His way. Unless I stay close to Him. You can't know somebody in the church or even in your life unless you spend time with them. Uh, amen. And sometimes that is the reason why we have these responses to us people that are not godly because we don't know them or we don't know God. I wish I had somebody here. We need to understand that what God wants us to do what he expects for us to do is to know him. Amen. How many times in the word in the week do you pick up your Bible? Do you study God's word? Do you draw closer to God? How many times do you stay in God's word throughout the week? I believe that when you stay in his word every day and you have Amen. constantly, consistently, every week, every month, stay in the word of God, you will have so much word in you. Amen. And all the thing that's gonna come out when somebody hurts you is gonna be a blessing. Amen. Amen. So the only thing that's going to come out when the Holy Spirit of God takes over your life is the blessing that comes from God. Amen. Amen. And so we need to understand that what God expects of us is to respond because how we respond makes all the difference. Amen, somebody. How we say things to others makes all the difference. And so we need to cultivate that kind of relationship where we are not just an every amen somebody that we actually live in the life amen, amen somebody and doing what God said is a contrary why is knowing that you are what there on to call don't miss that in other words you and I have been chosen when 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 you apply for a job and they chose you to come in and work. They chose you for a reason. You know the reason why they chose you is because when they looked at your application, they saw that you had certain qualifications. They saw that what they were looking for, come on somebody, is right there. So they chose you. And so based on what they saw, they chose you for the purpose of fulfilling the job that you applied for. Right. Now, if you go in there and you don't do what they saw, right. come on somebody, right. they will fire you. Right. Aren't you glad God ain't gonna do that to us? <laughs> Aren't you glad that God will give us another chance, right. and another chance, yeah. and another chance, right. and another chance? Right. And I, he never stopped giving us another chance. And for just that, we ought to be grateful. Just because he gave us another chance. He woke us up on another day. He gave us another opportunity. We ought to be coming in here praising God every day. When you get up in the morning, you ought to be praising God. Why? Because he gave you another chance to make it right with him. Amen, somebody. And when you get up in the morning, you ain't got time to be cussing at nobody. Amen, somebody. You ain't got time. To be fussing. That's not what on your. That's not what's on your mind. What's on your mind is your praise to God for what He has done. Amen. And every now and then, you ought to have praise on your lips. Amen. Somebody, Amen. you ain't got time. I believe that if we have praise on our lips, I ain't got time to be fussing at nobody. I ain't got time to insult you and to call your name because you call me. So me all. Amen. 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 Somebody, Amen. every now and then, we ought to learn to let the Holy Spirit take over. Uh, amen. And learn how the little Spirit guide us. Right. He said, we are called to this. That means that God called all of us for this purpose. Amen. The purpose is so that when somebody hurts us or somebody renders evil, that we are going to do what? Your do purpose. good. Amen. We're going to return good. In spite of the evil. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. And we have to learn how to do that. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, we are here to serve him. Mm -hmm. 
We're not here to serve ourselves. God. Amen. It'd be good if we're not here to serve us. Right. And then we can do what we want to do. Amen. Yes. But we're here to serve Him. Amen. And so it's important that we understand that what our purpose is, is so that He said that on the call, that you should what? Inherit a blessing. Amen. Be a blessing for a blessing. He says, you got to learn how if you want to really get under the devil's skin, if you want to really get him where it really hurts, uh, amen, somebody, because you know you ain't fighting each other, amen. Right. Right. We are fighting flesh and blood yeah. and against principalities yeah. and powers. Yeah. What we're yeah. fighting yeah. is the yeah. devil yeah. in the person, yeah. not the person coming in, amen, somebody. You got to learn how to do that. We are not fighting your family. You're not fighting your spouse. You're not fighting your children. You're fighting what's in them. Right. right. And you got to learn how to properly place the power right. and know what to do because the Bible said be sober. Right. Be vigilant. Right. For your adversary, yes. the devil is yeah. what? Like a roaring lion. lion. Seeking oh. and walking around, right. finding, trying to find somebody well, to attack him and somebody. Right. He needs to find one of us in here today that can, he can attack so that he can be where he wants him to be. But right. God said, I want you to be faithful right. in whatever you're going through. I want you to be Satan wants us to be faithless. Yeah. And so faithlessness. Yeah. But God wants us to show faithfulness. Amen. In other words, I'm still going to do what God says, even though I'm broke. Right. Come on, somebody. Right. Even though I'm hurt, I'm still going to do what the Lord said. Even though somebody talked about me, I'm still going to do what God said. Even though somebody don't love me, I'm still going to do what God said. Even though somebody may talk at the kitchen table about me, I'm still going to do what I mean, I have somebody here. Yeah. If you understand your power and your purpose in God, you will still go through life. Amen. Facing your fears. Yes. Facing your challenges in spite of what you're going through, God still is going to get the glory. Amen, somebody. And we need to learn that, that Satan is after us. Amen, somebody. He is after us. As a matter of fact, when he gets through with you, he's coming for me. When he gets through with me, he's coming for you. We need to have a mindset that we are not on a playground. We are on a battleground. And you need to learn that every now and then, you got to come outside your house ready to fight. Amen, somebody. Because you got to have the word of God in you if you're going to fight. Because we, our weapons are not carnal. <laughs> Our weapons are not common. Yeah. They are spiritual. Yes. We don't fight fire. Come on, somebody. I heard somebody say it in the White House. We're going to fight. Come on, somebody. What kind of example is that? When the White House says fight fire with fire. Yeah. All right. What is our children listen to? So then we got to come along and try to change that. He said, no, baby, I know what you heard. That's foolish. Amen. But you don't fight fire with fire. Amen, somebody. You overcome evil with good. Amen, somebody. And so we need to recognize that if we are going to be in the church, we are going to live and survive in this world, we have got to put our arm on. Amen, somebody. And somebody said we got to have the sword of the spirit. Uh, amen. Which is the word of God. And then we got to have the shield of faith. Amen, somebody. You got to have a sword. Come on, y'all. Y'all all right? And you got to have a shield. Amen. Because every time somebody rails at you, somebody insults you, that's an attack. But you got to have your sword and your shield. I got my sword yes. and my shield. Yes. Come on, somebody. Right. I have some I have an offensive weapon and I have a defensive weapon. Yes. My defensive weapon is when you come at me, my faith in the law is right. going to block every insult. Right. Right. Yeah, right. Somebody. Right. My faith in the law is going to block every hurt that right. you try to do yeah. to me. Yeah. But then I got the word of God and I'm going to jab right. you with some love. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to bark yeah. and I'm going to jab. Yeah. That's how you fight the spirit. Truly. Right. Uh, amen, somebody. Right. You gotta learn that when you live for God, you are constantly in a battle 
tea. Oh, and you gotta know that. You can't be eating ice cream. No. And hog no on the battlefield. All Come right. on, Because when you eat all that, the enemy creeps up on you. And he, somebody, and he creeps up on you in ways that you never imagined. Yeah, and if you eat the ice cream and hog and all this stuff, you're not going to be ready. Because all that's going to do is go, you're going to be licking your lips. <laughs> Y'all all right? Huh? The food is so good, you're licking your lips. And you're paying attention Amen. to where the enemy is coming from. And you've got to learn that the enemy can come in all kinds of ways. Amen. All kinds of colors, all kinds of shapes. And we need to be ready, church. We need to have the armor of God on Amen. if we're going to fight. And if we're going to get through any difficulty with folk or with circumstances, then I need to make sure that I'm ready. How do you get ready? Well, you get ready by staying in the word of God. Amen. You get ready by saying, by, by applying God's word and constantly coming to church. Amen. You may never, have, you may have a sin that you're trying to get rid of. Coming to church ain't going to solve it. All right. Come on, somebody. See, by the way, come. Hey, come on. Y'all hear what I'm saying? See, a sin, sin, sin. Uh, let, me, let me help you understand. you going to sin for the rest of your life. Amen. Amen. You're going to sit for the rest. What you're trying to do is be better. You're trying to focus on being better. You're not trying to focus on the sin. Because as soon as you get rid of that sin, you don't come to church no more. No, 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 no. So you have to constantly come in regardless. I'm not coming to church just to get rid of my sins. Come on, somebody. That's a different. No, I'm coming to the church so that uh, I'm thankful that God forgave me of my sins. So I'm thankful and I'm coming to the church because He forgave me. Uh, it is about Him. I'm not coming just for Him to forgive me. I'm coming because He already. Man. Yeah, yeah, somebody. I'm coming because he already forgave me right. and so he can never so so I come to church not based on what he can do for me right. amen. amen even if I'm broke and he now give me some money right. I'm still gonna come to church I wish I had somebody right. here right. so I don't come to church so that I can be relieved of my brokenness right. amen somebody right. I don't come to church because I'm broke and I need the Lord to help me get some more money no I come to church because God is worthy of my time my energy and my money amen, somebody. and so my purpose in life is to make sure that I'm not doing stuff backwards amen somebody you ain't coming to church amen because God gonna zap you if you don't come amen you know you come to church because he's worthy he's worthy even if things ain't going right in my life he's worthy even when I when, when I don't understand certain things, right. he's still worthy. Mm -hmm. I, I don't understand what I'm going through, but he's still worthy. Yes. Because it no matter, I'm going to have problems till the day I die. Right. If I allow what I go through to determine whether or not I'm going to come to church and I'm going to come to praise the Lord, and I got another thing coming. All right. See, I don't, I don't allow what's happening to me to, to dictate to me how I'm going to live for God. I don't, right. amen, so yeah. we don't not do that. Yeah. If you're up, you come to church. If you're down, you don't come yeah. to church. Come on, somebody. But I'm simply here to tell you whether you're up or down, you ought to still come and praise the Lord. Amen. You ought to still stay in His Word. You ought to still be able to Amen. give God the glory and the praise because He is just that good Amen. and He's worthy. To yes. be worshipped there regardless of what you got going on in your life. Amen. God is not looking at where I got I, I ain't got no job, so I can't come. No, you still ought to come. Come on, somebody. Right. Find somebody to bring you to church. If you still come on, y'all know right. what I'm saying. Right. You need to find some, that's how you know that you are committed to God because you can Uber yourself to church. Right. Help me, Lord right. Jesus. Right. There's no excuse now. You can Uber, you can do whatever. Amen. Right. But you just can't do that. All right. Amen. You can't do that. You got the Uber. All right. You can't stay home. Amen. And expect the food to come to you. All right. You got to Uber yourself to the church. Man. Amen. And you got to know that no matter what comes, hell, high water, I'm going to get to church. Yes. Because this is the place where I can come and get my praise on. Yes. This is the place I come when, when everything is topsy turvy right. in my life. This is the place I come Amen. to get 
Amen. some reward. Amen, Amen. somebody. Amen. And to reveal and to revive my soul Amen. and to refresh myself. Amen. Because every now and then Satan will attack me. Yes. And what I need to learn is that I can pray the Lord and sing to God and pray and again and encourage somebody else. Amen. Who's going through something That's right. just like you and I. Yes. I'm through. I saw a 27. 